um, when they when they start walking.
trumpet, praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the string instrument and organ. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the God, ye the Lord. Psalm. Let's give them one more round of applause as they're being seated. And I want to just take a moment to welcome everyone to our 2024 awards ceremony. As they're getting sorted in their seats here, we thank you all for joining us to celebrate a year of accomplishment and hard work and to honor our students. You may be seated. What we've just shared with you is an example of part of our day. Every day at Christian Growth Academy, we begin with our pledges, our scripture reading, and with a time of prayer and devotion because part of our vision in having a Christian school is that we are raising, first of all, Christians who know their Bible, and secondly, that they'll be good citizens in this great country that God's given us to live in. Amen? So, it becomes tedious. I promise you, even as uh, an instructor, a staff member, when you're quoting Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, for the 120th day of the year, sometimes you question, is this really necessary to do this again this morning? But yes, it is necessary, and you see the impact that the Word of God has on the lives of these children. So let's give them one more round of applause. We're going to begin presenting here. Before we delve into our students, I need to acknowledge our staff quickly. Uh, we have an incredible team of teachers who sacrifice daily in the instruction of our students, and they do such an incredible job, and I'm thankful for every one of them. Uh, the first one that I'd like to recognize this evening is Sister Jessica Cast, our elementary instructor. Thank you. You're welcome. And I believe our longest serving staff member besides myself. Um, thankfully, she's not losing her hair like I am. But um, <laughs> next is Sister Charlotte, our first grade teacher. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, she will not be returning in the fall due to changes in their family, but we're excited for this new chapter of parenting that they are setting out on. And thankful for her years of service. And a new teacher this year who took on kindergarten and took on a new curriculum all at the same time, Sister Cherry. Thank you for a job well done. And then, we have a few who don't necessarily run an entire classroom, but they help in so many ways, uh, tutoring, doing special classes, and working in a variety of capacities. And the first is Sister Carrie Lee, our English and writing instructor. <laughs> yes. You 
notice that almost the entire upper level stood? <laughs> How many of you had an essay saved by Sister Carrie? <laughs> okay. Uh, next is our math tutor and IXL instructor. Uh, you guys better be standing up here in just a minute. Sister Lewis, thank you so much. And of course, my wife, Sister Hicks, who's worked with me in so many capacities, trying to help me keep the wheels on the road as it were. And then uh, the, our helper in the Upper Learning Center, and who comes with just so much passion, and kids love hanging out with her, Sister Melody Elder, thank you so much for all of your hard work. I'm gonna have my wife come and just recognize a few other people real quick and then we'll move on quickly. I get to name off some of our volunteers. I think I do this each year and I think I love them the most because they get no money. They do this off of pure passion. If you would, when I call your name, if you would just stand so we can recognize you. When we've, I've called all the names, we can give applause. Sister Pound, Brother Jordan Pound, Sister Prendergast, Brother John Cast, Sister Elder, Sister Jesse Elder, and then any lunch volunteers that we've had. I know there's Michaela, there's Hyung, there's Naomi, uh, Mama Clark. We've had a lot of helpers come in. They're the ones doing birthdays, they're the ones um, helping everything go on behind the scene that we can't get done, or uh, sacrificing their time to help out in the classrooms. So please give applause to all our volunteers. <laughs> You may be seated. We also want to recognize our school board members. If you will also stand when we call your name. That is Sister Elder, Sister Carla Montez, Sister Lorinda Scheid, who is sick today, Sister Carrie Lee, Brother Westberg, and Brother James Salas. This is the CGA school board who helps keep us in line from year to year. Okay, our next award presentation, or our first award presentation, is gonna come from Sister Lewis with her math award. She did a special theme with our IXL program this year, and they were going places with math and going on a journey, and she gave me some statistics in a report, and they made incredible progress this year. Thank you, Sister Lewis. All right, so, as students know, I always have my back close by. So this year, our theme was going places with math. And so we were really looking for students' um, consistency um, as well as growth, so just that practice every day. So we challenged the students to spend 15 minutes each day so an, uh, for the four days, so an hour each week, doing some additional practice in math. Um, this year, um, CGA has done an additional 559 hours of math. So I think they need to give them a round of applause for that. <laughs> this is math above and beyond their regular math that they do, their book work and that type of stuff. So this is additional practice. So um, going places with math, they had to earn um, different mile markers. And so the first time they um, got um, a car, because we're on the road. Um, then they got some puzzle books, they got some um, Lego people, the unique people you meet on trips. Um, and then they got some interesting snacks. And of course, at the end of every trip, you need to have a souvenir shirt and a keychain. So that is what I'm gonna be giving today. Um, I'm gonna be giving them to my top five um, students that were consistently doing um, their 15 minutes a day, four days a week. So my first student doo, 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 is McKaylee. <laughs> my next student is Brother Silas. <laughs> my 
Next will be Brother Marcus. And my top two would be Brother Brinton. And Sister Nikki. And then finally, I um, would like to celebrate growth and progress overall. And our top um, student for our downstairs is Sister Keelan. And our top student for Sister Jess's class is Brother Oscar. Thank you. Real quickly, I want to present our highest overall grade average, one in the lower level and one in the upper level. And our highest overall test average for the elementary grades with a 99.19% test average for the year, Josiah Montez. Highest overall average in the Upper Learning Center. This came down to a difference of seven one hundredths at 94.20%, which means the student before this student had a 94.13%. But our highest performer in the upper grades this year is Carly Montez. I. I distinctly remember a time when a certain student used to kind of dominate the award ceremony. Um, and, and now it seems like a particular family <laughs> <laughs> is dominating some of the awards. So great job, guys. I'm going to ask Sister Cherry to come. We're going to present our kindergarten graduates at this time. So I was thinking what to say, but um, one of the things that I want to say is I am so proud of you two. They started late because of curriculum issues, but they were able to catch up um, with the new curriculum. They are actually able to read, do uh, basic math. Math was a little hard, but we got it, adding Two plus two is four. We had a, that was a hard one. <laughs> um, a couple of things that kind of stuck out during the year. I had a combination of sweet and sassy in the class. It was, I won't say who was who, um, but I loved it. I loved going every day, everything, just the things they say. At the beginning, it was like, why do we, why are you repeating this? This is why I'm repeating it. Because now, you know, your ABCs, your sounds, and you're reading. And I'm super proud. Um, we were doing some of our uh, last day activities this morning. And not only growth in their learning, but just in themselves. I remember doing Bible, and it's like, staring up in space and I was like well they got something and seeing the growth of them actually catching on and coming to me after serve and say did you hear Bishop he, he said the verse that you were reading and, and I'd be yeah you, you know and it, there's just that growth as well and in height growth as well we learned that we grew quite a bit of inches this year and it was just seeing that first year of school was amazing, and I'm super proud. So I will go ahead and give you your certificates. You guys ready? Ready? Yeah? Okay, so the first one will go to Brielle Condor. But in turn and my 
Second one, Zaylin Willis. Thank you, guys. You may be seated. Uh, kindergarten is fun. I'm not really cut out to teach it, so I'm thankful somebody is. Yeah. So we have this table over here. Uh, with the boxes on it. We brought back something that we've done before um, where we just give out random amounts of cash. So these boxes contain anywhere from 10 to $100, and every student has a number in their pocket. So it's completely randomized. Everybody's going out of here with some kind of cash. Somebody's going out of here with $100. So, number one, which I happen to know, is Sister Sage. Yeah, <laughs> Who has number two? Mikai? All right. Number three. Number four. Ten dollars. Go ahead and open it. You got fifty? Fifty right here. Number five. Zaylin. You need some help, bro? Ten dollars for McKay. Ten for Brother Isaac. Ten dollars. All right. Awesome. I think I'm more interested than they are. All right. Going to ask Sister Melody to come. We're going to present our character trait awards. Thank you. So our character trait award given to each of the students is where we go through the past year just in memory and we review the student's conduct and we use this to build character. So our first character award is Brielle Condor is diligent. She is diligent. <laughs> Zaylin Willis is determined. Mikai Cisneros is generous. <laughs> Elena Montez is responsible. <laughs> Oscar Flores is joyful. <laughs> Josiah Montez is courageous. <laughs> Evelyn Pound is creative. <laughs> David Salas is observant. <laughs> Malachi Cisneros, appreciative. Mateo Lopez, determined. Skylar Menes is resourceful. Nolan Pound, loyal. Brennan Reed, attentive. Mariah Tovar, observant. Keelan Lee, creative. Marcus Solis, available. Thanks for helping me clean the fridges. <laughs> Got a free Chick-fil-A shake just for that. <laughs> Zakaya Willis, temperate. Silas Cast, truthful. <laughs> Brenton Pound is sincere. Madison Babcox is flexible. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Samuel Grego is tolerant. Makaili Prendergast, diligent. Matthew Reed, discerning. Isaac Villalobos is humble. Sage Babcock is gentle. 
Lamisha King is respectful. Aiden Lunder is cooperative. <laughs> Jaden Prendergast, loyal. Isaac Reed, persuasive. <laughs> Nicole Cast, purposeful. Carly Montez, peaceful. Let's give him a hand clap. All right, our next set of awards is our Bible Memorization Awards. These are the students who have completed all of their Bible memory for the year. And so they'll receive a certificate and a gift card to Taffy's. And quite a few students were able to complete all of their Bible memory this year. And we're very proud of them for that. First recipient is Brielle Condor. Zaylin Willis. Mikai Cisneros. Elena Montez. Josiah Montez. Evelyn Pound. David Salas. <laughs> Skylar Menis. <laughs> Nolan Pound. <laughs> Keelan Lee. <laughs> Marcus Salas. Silas Cast, Brenton Pound, Samuel Grego, Matthew Reed, Jaden Prendergast, Isaac Reed, Nicole Cast, and Carly Montez. Okay, we're gonna call some more numbers. Who has six? Mariah, seven. Okay, give your numbers to Sister Hicks. Eight. Nine and ten. I will go to eleven just because. Who's got eleven? Okay. <laughs> Call out what you got when you open it. Mr. <laughs> Cherry, kindergarten. Animal. Anybody hit big money yet? Marcus got a hundred bucks. Woo! You're going to have lots of friends after service, Marcus. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give the A honor roll for my class. Okay, so the first one, and like I said, it was a new curriculum, but they, they killed it. First one is Brielle Condor. And second one, Zaylin Willis. Right, our next award is our supervisor's honor roll. 
which is the students have maintained a B average in all of their coursework, completed all of their scripture memorization, and haven't annoyed their teacher too much. So we want to recognize these students for making B honor roll for the entire year. Here he goes. And the first student that we have is Nolan Pound. Good job, Nolan. And the next student that we have is Nicole Cast. Okay, our next group of awards is our Principals Honor Roll, which is our students who've maintained an A average for the entire year. It's 94% or higher in all of their testing and completed all of their scripture memory and not annoyed their teacher too much. And so we want to present these awards. Our first recipient of Principals Honor Roll this year is Elena Montez. Josiah Montez. <laughs> Evelyn Pound. <laughs> David Salas. <laughs> Skylar Manis. <laughs> Keelan Lee. Silas Cast, <laughs> Mikhaili Prendergast, <laughs> and Carly Montez. <laughs> All right, we need some more numbers. Where do we leave off? 11? Number 12. Who has number 12? Jaden. This guy doesn't need this. He's already working. He's got more money than I do. Okay, number 13. 14. 15. 16. Okay, call out your numbers. 20, 20, 10, 10, 20, no, 10, 10, okay. <laughs> All right. Our next award is our Sportsmanship Award. I'm going to ask Sister Charlotte to come and present that. So this year I was, I filled in as a PE teacher and um, we had some good days, we had some bad days. Um, it was different for all the kids, you know, they have a different PE teacher every year. It's not really the same every year and not every teacher is the same. So um, this year I paid attention to every student um, during PE time. It's not always fun because it's towards the end of the week. Everybody's tired towards the end of the day, but I was definitely paying attention. And the two students that I chose for the sportsmanship award, um, one reason why I chose them was because they were kind to their classmates. They, the famous four square that every CGA student plays um, isn't always the nicest words being spread around. Um, but these two students, I never once heard them call another student a name. Um, I never heard them complain when they got out of the game. And some of the older students, um, they get out the little students just because they can sometimes, but these two older students, they never did that. Um, they never purposely tried to hurt anybody or hurt anybody's feelings, make anybody sad, so they were very kind to their classmates. 
And another reason why I chose these two students is because um, they were very helpful. Um, they never complained if somebody left things outside after PE, they would grab it, they wouldn't make a scene, they wouldn't say, hey, you left this, they would just pick it up and take it inside. And they would help me if I needed help with anything, setting up anything, um, so they never complained. And another reason is because they were respectful towards me as well as the PE teacher. Um, they never complained, you know, if I said, okay, it's time to run, um, you couldn't tell if these two students were happy or sad. They always had a good attitude. And so I want to tell these two students, um, thank you. I appreciate you. I noticed you. And I hope you continue to keep these positive attitudes. So the first one is Zakaya Willis. And the second one is Aiden Lunder. I have to say, I'm very proud of those two students. Uh, in particular, I think Aiden is one of the kindest students I've ever had. He has just such a good heart. Very proud of him. And Zakaya maintains a good attitude, but she is competitive. <laughs> and she will come after you. So um, <clears throat> next award on the list is Christian Character Award. This award is selected for a student who has exemplified Christian character in worship, in prayer, in the way they treat others. Uh, just so many facets. We sat in our staff meeting as we worked on these and we discussed several students and they kind of boiled over and we wrote a couple names down and then we thought about it for a couple days and so we finally came to the conclusion that this year's Christian Character Award will go to Brother Nolan Pound. Okay, Sister Charlotte. Um, I'm going to present the most improved student. Um, this student was in my class. And I saw them day in and day out from the beginning of the year to the very end of the year. And I have to say, the beginning of the year, um, after summer, sometimes can be a little rocky. Um, and it's a new teacher. They've only been in school for one year. But um, towards the middle of the year, there had been so much improvement already. Um, I didn't really have to get on this student as much, um, and there was behavioral um, improvements, and by the end of the year, um, we just had a good time. We, I did not have to get on this student, and I did not have to um, worry about them. So I'm presenting the most improved student to Mackay Cisneros. All right, I also had a most improved student this year. And I can say that my class this year was the largest I've ever had in my time of teaching. I had nine students in-house. Eight of them were young men. One of them was a little lady, and it made for very interesting days. So have you forgive me when I say that the young man that I'm presenting this award to today, okay, I didn't forget you, um, was a student that came into my class, and I'm not really sure that he wanted to be there. We butted head on several occasions. Um, our battles were epic and oftentimes one-sided. There came a point where I looked at him and said, I'm not trying to harm you and making you do it this way. I'm trying to help you, and if you will listen to what I'm telling you and follow my instructions, 
you will grow and you will see improvement. And it was at that moment that this young man decided, okay. And there were days that I would see him actively fighting that will that he had to do it his way and he would just, no, and he would grind it out. And so I watched that over the course of two years and I will say that this year, not only has he improved academically, he's matured in his responsibility and being responsible and taking ownership for his things. He's matured spiritually. So it was with great honor and great pride that my most improved student award goes to Mr. Brennan Reed. Good job. All right. Let's get some more numbers. Where do we leave off? 17. 18. Ooh. <laughs> 19. 20. 21. And there's no 22. 20, I know, thank you. <laughs> What'd you get? 20, 10, 10. So we're on 22? 22? Another 22. 23? Bree, Bree, 23. Mom's like, get the 50. 24? 25? 26. There's no 26. Oh, I was like, there's no 26 either. Oh, it's me again. Sorry, guys. All right, our next award um, is our Outstanding Elementary School Student. This award is the equivalent to our highest award, which is our Pastor's Award. And this is given out to students in the elementary school level who have not only exemplified excellent academics, but also growth spiritually and the way they treat their classmates this student this year um, <laughs> had a lot going on, and they came in every day excited to be there, excited to participate. They excelled academically. Um, their grade is kind of a transition from paces, uh, being taught it lockstep, or, and they're taking on more responsibility. But this student never let it get him down. Um, at the beginning of the year, we were coming into the sanctuary and praying. This student would always be found in the altar, praying with their friends, praying for family members. They were quite vocal in their prayers. Uh, academically, they gave all the other students a run for their money. And to be honest, she held her own all year. So this year's Outstanding Elementary School student goes to Evelyn Pound. All right, one last award. Bishop, if you could join me. We're going to present the Pastor's Award to this year's recipient. Of course, it is called the Pastor's Award, so I'll let Bishop explain what that is. Well, the Pastor's Award uh, is, it includes a myriad of, of things that we look for. We look for academics. Mm. We look for character. We look for uh, attitude adjustments. They don't have to be perfect, but they have to be improving. And, uh, and I have known this individual since they were born. In fact, I dedicated them. And so it's with great joy and happiness that I give this award this year to Mr. Silas Cast. Congratulations. 
Now, he also does my yard and takes care of my dogs. And I'm real late on getting him a payment, so pray for me that I get caught up on my bill with him. But he's real kind about it. He has, he's true Christian character. <laughs> All right, we got a few more numbers to go. Where do we leave off? 26? 28. 28. 29. Did the other $50 bill appear yet? You had it? You didn't tell anybody? Hmm. That sounds familiar. All right, 30. Number 30. Thirty-one. Okay. We did not pull number 31. <laughs> First person to jump off the music again is in the box. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, when opportunity presents itself, you got to grab it. Okay, we got two more boxes. Uh, let's see. Who can tell me the periodic symbol for gold? Did you say it first? AU is correct. Go ahead, Maddie. Wow. He's showing his math skills here. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's pull one of our verses. Acts 2 4. Oh. Brenton? Okay. I mean, did he get it correctly, every word? I mean, we're, they're quizzers, right? It can't be off by a word. Okay, great job, guys. I'm proud of you for all of your hard work this year. Let's give them one more round of applause. Great job. Amazing work. Thank you. And so we're going to take a brief intermission right now, and we'll come back in a few moments and prepare for our graduation ceremony. We're going to celebrate Sister Carly Montez graduating from high school. All right, about 10 minutes. Thank you.
What a momentous time. 13 years of hard work translates into this great accomplishment today and this great victory. And for this, we celebrate this time. And one of the major ways that we always celebrate as God's children is we celebrate in prayer and worship. So we invite you today to join with us as we give God the honor, the praise, and this wonderful celebration of, I have to say it, Miss Carly Sue. <laughs> she will always be Miss Carly Sue to Brother Elder. Let's all join together and let's give God the praise and the honor that he's worthy of as we open this ceremony today. God, we love you and we thank you for this wonderful young lady who has shown a devotion and a love for you from the time that she has been born, God. She's given her heart to you. She has given her life to you. She has given her talents to you, oh God. She has given the effort and the labor to you. And so today we celebrate her great accomplishment. And we ask, oh God, that you would celebrate with us and that your favor and your presence and the moving of your Holy Spirit would come down in this house today that you would sanction this, O oh God, and not only this, but sanction her future, God. Fill her future with brightness, Lord Jesus. Fill her future with blessing, O oh God. Fill her future, O oh God, with favor. Fill her future with victory, O oh God. And providence, O oh God. The wonderful, bountiful ways that only you can do it, Jesus. We give honor and praise and glory to the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We honor you. We magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. You may be seated. We want to welcome all of you to the 2024 Christian Growth Academy commencement ceremony and we are celebrating a very special and anointed young lady today for all of her accomplishments very proud of you sister carly and uh, she told us in the hallway back there that she was probably going to cry and i said that's okay Just don't feel bad about it okay uh probably some of the rest of us are going to cry before this is over but we're also going to smile and laugh and have a good time. And we're so proud of her accomplishments. And we'll talk a little bit more about what she's done academically before this is over. But I want to welcome her to come, share some reflections, maybe some thanks. Try not to cry too much, all right? Hello, everybody, and welcome to my really, I mean, graduation. <laughs> I'm honored that you all have made time to be here with me on this special occasion. Well, here I am, closing a chapter of my life that felt like it would never end. I want to start off by giving thanks to whom it is due, to my teachers first, Sister Hicks, from first grade coloring pages, <laughs> crying and pleading to go to Auntie Barb's office and reading Corner Narnias, to preparing me to face the terrifying unknown, which is called Brother Hicks's class. <laughs> Sorry. You've taught me that fear is an option and that adventure awaits around every corner. Thank you for teaching me the diligence of coloring inside of the lines. Brother Hicks, where do I stuck? <laughs> Oof. You were my best friend sharing Altoids in church until I had to face you in school. I was terrified. <laughs> 
when that day came and I finally had to face it, and as expected, I quickly became his best and favorite student. Duh. <laughs> just kidding. I was just one of his favorites until about sophomore year of high school, that is. My procrastination quickly got the best of me, and I started to go downhill. However, Brother Hicks, maybe unknowingly or knowingly, always pushed me to climb back up to the top. I may not be graduating with a 4.0 like I always dreamed of, but I am graduating with the satisfaction of knowing I can accomplish hard things. And even when it may look like I won't make it, it all works out how it's supposed to. Even when taking a trig test on the last day of school, a day before graduation. Thank you for teaching me that I'm capable of tackling hard things. Sister Reed, you weren't my teacher for very long, but the time you were, you gave me a new perspective on life. You taught me that I shouldn't take life so seriously and that kindness will always find its way back to you. You were the life of the classroom and brought an unexpected life into your students. I love you and I appreciate all you've done for me. Sister Jess. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> You were never my teacher, but you've taught me more than a math test or a science project ever could. She's emotionally available and readily picks up broken people and helps put them back together. She's the reason I made it through my first two years of high school. She was there with me to listen to me cry and cry about me being scared about my future at 14 years old to take me to crumble what I needed to get out of the house during the summer, and simply to be an amazing example of a wife, mother, leader, friend, and so much more. She's a gem, and I'm so glad that Jesus sent her my way to pick me up when I had fallen. Now to my parents. Mom, you're my rock. When my world has been shaken, you were my solid ground to stand on. You didn't ever let me give up. You're my best friend. And even though we fight 24 seven, cause we have the same attitude, I know you love me with everything in you. <laughs> Dad, the one who played Barbies with me because mom didn't want to. <laughs> the one who took me to Sonic to get M&M ice cream, it seems like every week. Thank you for showing me what passion is. I don't think I'd be the singer I am today if it wasn't for you. I love you and your crazy quirks. You're the best dad in the whole world. I want to also thank Bishop and Mima for constantly pouring into me and praying for me, for opening up their home, for letting me hang out with Melody so much, and for giving me your precious little dog. I love Lolly so much, I wish she was here. <laughs> now to my CGA classmates. I wanted to leave you all with something meaningful. And if I could give you all any bit of advice, it'd be that hard seasons create strong people. Being sensitive isn't a bad thing. And place good people in your life. Whether it be somebody like Grandma Westberg, that constantly tells you to smile even if it's the last thing that you wanna be doing. Someone like my sister-in-law, Kathy, who in a loving way will keep you on track and push you to be the best version of yourself. Someone like my brother who is honest and is a safe space to tell anything I need to. Or someone like Mima, who will spend hours of her time driving me around when you need, when I just needed peace of mind and clarity. Lastly, let God guide your steps and realize that there's safety in letting him take control. Your future is bright because it's in your hands, and I, I love you all, and I'm rooting for you. Thank you. In a galaxy not so far away, the God of heaven decided to send one of his angels to the earth in a time of extreme darkness to give light and hope to the future. She arrived on March 13th, 2006 to learn the ways of the Force 
and provide joy and happiness to all she encountered. Caution may cause extreme joy or extreme sadness. Viewer discretion advised. Even at a young age, she was quite demanding. Get a picture of me. Uh, uh, Daddy's gonna take a picture of me. 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 She loved to dance and always show off her skills. God gave her the gift of song at a young age. I'm too young to fly in the chalice, march in the calorie, shoot the chalice, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I promise you, I'll spin my own race, spin my own race with you. two years old, she already sought high achievement. How high do you want to go? I used to hear a simple song That was until you came along Now in its place is something new I hear it when I look at you She loved her childhood and couldn't wait to start school, but she had no idea what was in store. She excelled in school and won more awards and trophies than anyone in history. I'm Harriet Tubman, and I feed the slaves. 
I was born a slave on a plantation in 1820 in Bucktown, Maryland. this broadcast to bring you a message from our sponsor, Public Health and Safety. What happened, baby? to poop in the toilet in the toilet the narrator found this video and had to quit editing because he bawled like a baby but you can show this video to daddy I'm just gonna keep it for when you get bigger I can remember when you were a little girl and we used to have we used to come and have ice cream That's why daddy has to take these videos. So I can remember you when you were little and how cute you were. And although she was born in the Montez home, we know that we didn't raise her alone. So for any of you that helped us raise Carly, thank you.
couldn't be more proud of you. Of who you were, who you are, and who you are becoming. You're all grown up now. If you stay humble and serve God all the days of your life, He will ensure that one day you'll make it. We love you, Carly. Congratulations. That was incredible. I texted Brother Mace yesterday or the day before, and I said, hey, there's a certain time frame for the slideshow, and he said, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> he said, but I promise you, you will not be bored. <laughs> and we were definitely not. If we could stand to our feet, we're going to go into a moment of worship before we bring our speaker. And I know we always have the ceremonial part of a graduation, but I want us to just take a moment, step into a place of worship, allow the Holy Ghost to begin to move in this place. Because I believe God wants to do something very special for Carly today. And I believe that there is favor and direction and purpose on her life. So I want to make sure we pause just long enough to create that space for God to do what he needs to do in this place. So if we could just begin to lift up our voices as the worship team is leading us and give the Lord some praise for the next few moments. I can 
is a graduation ceremony but there is no presence like the presence of the Lord in this place tonight Woo, hallelujah hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus back in the day we might have went from there and sang I, I, I love you I love you I love you Lord today because you cared for me in such a special way. And yes, I praise you. Anybody remember that song? I lift you up, Lord, I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Would you lift your hands and just sing that to him one time? I love you. I love you, I love you, Lord, today, yeah, because you cared for me in such a special way. Yes, I praise you, I lift you up, Lord. time in this place. Let's honor his presence. Woo! Hallelujah, Jesus. Korobo We exalt you, Jesus. We magnify your name tonight. Amen. You may be seated this evening. I want to take just a moment to say 
what a distinct honor and absolute privilege uh, that it is to stand in this place tonight and to be asked to participate in such a momentous occasion of the graduation of not only a very special young lady, but a young lady that just happens to be my precious niece. And uh, I am, uh, I don't know that I have ever uh, been at a graduation ceremony uh, that I felt like crawling under the chair and bawling like a baby like I did a few minutes ago. But I was trying to hold it together and uh, my mind was flooded with so many precious and amazing memories uh, of this precious woman who sits before us today. And I want to, uh, as we honor her tonight, I also want to give honor to her parents tonight who have done such an incredible job of, of raising an amazing young lady. Would you help me give them a round of applause tonight? The Bible tells us that you judge a tree by the fruits that it bears. And she is a testament and a, uh, a walking uh, billboard of the quality of parents that she has. And uh, I love all of them so very, very much. Now I'm going to be very transparent with you tonight that early, early on coming to this graduation, I was very confident that I uh, had uh, a word from God that I was going to be preaching, uh, prepared well in advance and ready to deliver in this house. And just this morning, sitting out on a lake, the hand of God reached down to where I was and God gave me a rhema word from heaven. And I'm just going to tell you tonight, this is a word from God for you, Carly. And if nobody else was here tonight, you and I could just sit and have a conversation and talk about what thus saith the Lord. And so I'm going to obey the Holy Ghost tonight. And I want to tell you what God told me today to tell you. And I have a feeling that you've been praying and asking God to give you a word. Tonight, God's sending you a word from him. I invite the rest of you to listen in tonight. I promise you I won't keep you longer than Waffle House is open. Some of you will get that in a few minutes. I want to read from the word of the Lord tonight in the book of Luke, chapter number one. It is our tradition uh, in church services to stand for the reading of the word. And I think it would be just all right if we stood in honor of the entrance of God's word into this house tonight. The book of Luke, chapter number one. <clears throat> and... Before I read this, I want to also give a great big thank you to uh, the educational pastor, Pastor Paul Hicks, and the incredible staff of Rock Christian Academy uh, for put, I'm sorry, Lord have mercy. That's our school in Fort Myers. Christian Growth Academy, there we go. I want to give all of them a great big thank you and a round of applause tonight. What an amazing Amazing job they have done. And um, both of my sons uh, are graduates, uh, or, or at least the majority of their education was under the banner of uh, Christian Growth Academy. And uh, this school has left an indelible mark on the lives of my family. And I love and appreciate uh, their leadership and all of their staff and the sacrifices that are made so that our children are able uh, to have an apostolic environment 
to grow in. Amen? Luke chapter number 1, <clears throat> verse 46, or 26 rather, says, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, and blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be? seeing I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And for literally the next few minutes, I want to give you a word for Carly. A word for Carly. Would you help me one more time lift your hands all over this house? Lord, we need you in this place. We need a word from you, God. Oh, I thank you, Jesus, for the touch of your hand upon this house tonight, God. We stand before you with open hearts, God. We ask you to speak to us, Jesus. The wind of the Holy Ghost blow into this sanctuary tonight. God, we sense destiny in this house. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. It's interesting to note that right here in the middle of this chapter, God pulls back the veil for just a moment, reveals to us that God is about to set the stage for the most momentous occasion that has ever occurred the earth realm and he summons one of his angels to procure the message he sends the angel down and I believe that it's very interesting to see the contrast of the picture that is painted before us such a moment in the snapshot of history. 
God does not send the angel down to Jerusalem. He doesn't send the angel to any of the capital cities of the nation. But he sends the angel to a city in Galilee called Nazareth. And it is mind-blowing to me because it is from the canvas of the ordinary that God reveals the extraordinary. He sends the angel to a young lady that the Bible doesn't tell us, but if you read extra biblical literature, most feel like that this young lady was probably the age of anywhere from 16 to 18 years old. She lives in the city of Nazareth, a city of maybe one to 400 people at that time. Her name is Mary. Mary doesn't have some major pedigree. As a matter of fact, Mary comes from a very simple place. She's espoused unto a man by the name of Joseph, who is also a simple man. The Bible says that he was a carpenter. They were middle class at best. Later on, you find them offering turtle doves in the temple, which was the offering of people who were middle class. Just an ordinary young lady. But an angel shows up one day and begins to speak to her and tell her, Mary, I know this is going to blow your mind but you are highly favored by God. You have found favor with God and you are blessed. Not above women. She was nobody special. But you're blessed among women. And upon the announcement or pronouncement of this angel to her, the Bible says that she was taken aback at this salutation from the angel. In other words, she was thinking to herself, are you talking to me? Is this really me? That Are you sure you have the right address? Are you sure that you have the right person? Me, highly favored and blessed by God. Carly, God's hand is on you in a way that you cannot even imagine tonight. And these videos were a reminder, a brief few minutes to bring us from your birth all the way till now. But God sent an angel into this house tonight to deliver a message to you that everything's about to change because you have found favor with God and God's blessings are on your life. begins to explain to Mary that you are going to conceive and bear a child. And he begins to describe things that are absolutely mind-blowing. He is telling her there is something that is coming out of your womb. In other words, I have prepared prepared you to carry something that when you bring it into the earth realm is going to change everything it comes in contact with. There is something on the inside of you. I, this thing that you are going to bring out of you is you don't even understand, Mary, but blind eyes are going to be healed. 
Deaf ears are going to be open. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Uh, there is good. He is going to sit upon the throne of his father, David. There is a dream that is painted on this canvas of the ordinary backdrop of this young lady. It, but it is a dream full of color. It is a dream full of magnificence. It is a dream full of greatness and, and grandeur. And as the angel begins to paint this picture, I believe it ignited something on the inside of Mary. It was the dreams that were given to her by God from her birth. It was things that maybe she had never even expressed to other people that when she really, really was in that secret place of her life, she, she thought about and, and her dreams would take off and soar and they weren't just songs about rainbows. They were real dreams about great things. And as the angel began to speak to her, I believe it began to wake something up on the inside of Mary. But at the same time, running parallel to this awakening inside of Mary is this other emotion. And Mary looks at the angel, completely vulnerable at that moment, and she says, how can this be, seeing that I know not a man? We understand the context of Mary's question in childbirth, but I want you to think of from this, this point. Her, her, her question was, how can this be when I don't even have the right relationships and connections for that to happen in my life? How can this come to pass, these, these things that you're describing and, 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 and showing me and telling me about? How are any of these things going to, you don't understand. I'm just a simple girl from a simple place. You, you don't understand who you're talking to. What, what you're telling me about doesn't match my history. What you're telling me about doesn't match the last 18 years of my life. And here you are, angel, telling me that all these unbelievable things are somewhere down inside. How can this be? And the angel looks at her and says, it's going to be the, the most high is going to overshadow you. It's going to be the presence of God that overshadows you. And Mary, when God's presence comes upon you the way it's about to come upon you, God is going to ignite something inside of you that you never thought you could bring to pass. Carly, God sent me tonight to tell you that God's about to lay his hand on you in this house tonight. And when God lays his hand upon you, there's going to be something released on the inside of your spirit. And I know I'm not even worried about what anybody in this room thinks tonight, but I'm telling you tonight is a special night. This isn't just your graduation from CGA, but this is a turning point. This is a God moment in your life, not just marking the end of a season, but the beginning of a brand new one. God, the angel said, the, the Most High is going to overshadow you. And when God's hand is placed upon you, you're going to do things you never thought you could do before. You're going to bring, there's going to be things that come out of you, a potential that comes out of you that you never thought was possible. And I don't want you to think about where you're from. I don't want you to think about your history. All I want you to understand is that when I get finished, I'm going to bring the greatest thing out of you that you could possibly imagine. And I'm almost finished tonight. And there was one thing left to happen, Carly. When the angel spoke to her and delivered this message to her, she had to decide, what am I going to do with what God said? You see, she was betrothed to a man. But God interrupted this human relationship. 
and said, before you go down that road, Mary, you're going to spend time with me. Because later on, the angel would tell Joseph that that which is in her is conceived of the Holy Ghost. There is a conception that's going to happen. You know how conception takes place? It takes place with times of intimacy. And what God was saying is, Mary, I'm calling you into a season of intimacy with me that's going to supersede all the other relationships in your life. And when you turn your eyes from all of the other relationships that are around you and you get your eyes back on me, I'm going to conceive something in you that you never dreamed was possible. How can this be, seeing I know not a man? God wanted her to know, for what I'm going to do, you don't need a man. All you need is my hand upon your life. And Carly, tonight God's calling you into a new season of intimacy with him. And born out of this next season of intimacy with God, you're about to give birth to something in your life that you never knew was possible. There's going to be things that start to grow out of your life, potentials that you never thought, you never dreamed imaginable. But you've got to be willing to answer the beckoning call of God tonight to that place of it more important than any other relationships in your life. Her response to me is the most powerful part of the story. In verse number 37, or verse number 35, the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Verse 38, Mary says, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. Tonight, Carly, all God's looking for is a yes to his word. Tonight, God sent the angel to tell you and all God is looking for is for you to say yes, Jesus. According to your word, let it be so in my life. And there's another verse in here that I believe God put on purpose. God doesn't put things in here just on accident. Because even after the word of the Lord comes forth, God knew that there would be doubt in her mind. Is this real? This, these, these things that you're telling me. And the angel stops in the middle of his conversation and says, with God, all things are possible. Carly, I want you to close your eyes right now and I want you to think about every dream that God's given you. I want you to think about every time God has pulled back the curtain of your life. God sent me as a voice to tell you tonight that with Him, everything He has showed you is possible. That with Him, you can be everything that God has showed you. And all God needs is for you to say, according to that word, be it unto me. I want us to stand in this house tonight. And I want all of the appropriate ministry to prepare to come tonight. In this moment, I believe that God has surrounded this house with a great cloud of witnesses. God's word has come to you tonight, Carly. This is no ordinary graduation service. This is a God moment in your life. Would you come tonight? We're going to pray. Her parents and those that would normally be invited to come and pray in this moment. 
God has called us to witness something special in this house tonight. And I'm standing on the word of God in this place. Every person under the sound of my voice. In the next days and weeks and months to come, you're going to see evidence of what God is doing in this young lady's life like you have never seen it before. In days and weeks to come, Carly, you're going to start to outgrow some things. As God begins to work inside of you, there's going to be some parameters and things that have held on to you that you're going to expand beyond those borders. Don't be afraid to let go. Don't be afraid to say goodbye to some things. And don't be afraid to embrace some things that God is bringing to your life. Because God is expanding who you are. And everybody is going to see God's work in your life. Would you lift your hands with me all over this house as we pray for this young lady? In the name of Jesus. Oh God. Church, would you extend your hands in this direction and help us pray in the Holy Ghost tonight for just a few moments. to lift our hands. I know you you may have never been to a graduation like this before, but God orders the steps of our children, and we give him the liberty to do that for just a few more minutes. Just a few more minutes. Let's allow God to do his work here today. up our voices one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this promise. Thank you for the transference of anointing that we feel in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God.
Special moment, Sister Carly. The Holy Ghost has blessed this moment, and we're thankful for that. You may be seated. Just want to say once again how very proud we are of you, of all your hard work and accomplishments, if not a bit of procrastination. <laughs> um, but you did it. You made it. And even scored a 99 on her last test on Thursday. So, great job. I, words fail me because as time goes by, I've now known our graduates their whole life. <laughs> and uh, she mentioned about the Altoids. And she used to come in church and get in my suit coat when she was like two because she knew I had a can of Altoids. And she would grab the Altoids without asking, I might add. But that's all right. Well, Sister Carly, you can stand. Christian Growth Academy, Pueblo, Colorado, whereas Carly Rochelle Montez has satisfactorily completed the necessary requirements of study as prescribed by school administrators for graduation from our honors course of study. She is thereby granted this high school diploma and is entitled to all the rights and privileges which pertain thereto this 31st day of May, 2024. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. I picked that scripture very specifically for this diploma. I love you, Sister Carly. Congratulations. You may now move your tassel from the right to the left. And we present to you the graduating class of 2024. Thank you all for being here, for joining us in our award ceremony, our graduation. And let's stop by and tell Sister Carly how proud of her we are and excited for the hand of God on her life and what the future holds. God bless you. Get up. 